Welcome to our spoiler-free review of Exit the Game, The Catacombs of Horror, a exit, uh, big box exit game that's bigger, longer, and harder than any of the other exit games out there. Before we get going, I want to take a moment to thank Cosmos for sending us a review copy of this Escape in a Room in a Box game. All right, this is the fourth exit game that we played through. I played through with my with my my wife and some once my one of my daughter and my my mother in law. It's our fourth one. And before we get to this one, I do want to quickly go over our thoughts on the previous exit games we played. So links to the full reviews of each of these games will be in the show notes. All right, so our first exit experience was the secret lab. Well, more difficult than we expected, it was just about the right level of challenge. Now, this is rated a 3 out of 5 on Cosmos' difficulty scale. The second game we played was the House of Riddles. Now, after the Secret Lab, we thought trying something slightly easier, because it's a rated 2 out of 5, might be more fun. But as you can read in our review, uh, we found that one a little too easy. Up next, we tried out the Haunted Roller Coaster. Now, this is also rated a 2 out of 5, but this was a newer release and many people have heralded this as the best gateway to the exit games. And we went in expecting to be disappointed, but we were not at all. We really enjoyed the haunted roller coaster and found it to be one of the most fun escape room in a box experience we've had. I still think at this time it is the best gateway to the exit series. Now, after these last two, they were rather easy, a little too easy. We thought it was probably time we checked out something harder. Plus, you know what? It's mid-October, and it's the time of year for playing horror-filled games. So this seemed like the perfect time to crack open Exit the Game, The Catacombs of Horror. What better than a spooky horror puzzle for the season? One I should mention the publisher claims people have suggested is itself haunted. Yes, they have. I saw that. So Catacombs of Horror was designed by Inca and Marcus Brand with Ralph Querforth. It features artwork from Sylvia Kristoff, Martin Hoffman, and Michaela Klein. This Escape Room in a Box was published by Fame and Cosmos in 2018. This is the largest, longest, and most difficult exit game they have published so far. What uh, You won't find an unboxing video for this one, as we didn't want to spoil anything for people interested in playing through this puzzle box. So besides coming in a larger, physically bigger box than uh, most of the other, well, all the other exit games, this has mostly what we've come to expect in all of them, this being our fourth game. There's a short introductory booklet that explains how the game is played, and then a bunch of unusual objects, like a four-fold poster with a warning on it that says, don't open this. Uh, there's a little thin Polaroid-style image. There's a thin card picture in a frame. Three small skulls. These are awesome looking in red, white, and blue. There's a tea light candle, the decoder disc, and a very thin punch board. Now, the punch board contains a number of other strange items. Finally, you have the cards, because all of these exit games are card-driven. There are 28 riddle cards, 48 answer cards, and 42 help cards. Now, the 42 help cards are split into 14 little decks of three cards each. That's the kind of stuff you're going to expect in every exit game with different unusual items each time. What's totally new in this box compared to any of the previous is there's a whole other box in here that's about the size of a normal exit game. This locked box, you don't end to open until the second half of the game. So two, two, two games in one. Impressive. In a way, yeah, pretty much. Now, I will note there is a candle. There is a point in this puzzle. You will require a dark room and the candle, and that is required to solve one of the puzzles. Due to the fact you have a live flame at the table, the instruction book has a significant warning section in it. Similarly, the box has one of the most amusing series of warning icons I have ever seen in my life. I hope to show a picture of that during the review. Well, it's sad that we need to overly warn people about what was once the primary form of light for most households. It is better to be safe than sorry, and it's easy enough to get distracted in a game setting, and whoop, your game is on fire. Yes. It is worth noting you do not have to burn anything to solve this puzzle. I probably shouldn't, in fact. Yes. 
There are a total of 14 riddles in the Catacomb of Horrors. Uh, unlike the last two exit games, these are not linearly presented. So in all the, the original, the, the two difficulty ones, it was very much solve this puzzle, turn the page, solve the next puzzle, turn the page. Now I'm saying turn the page theoretically, but move on to the next one. This is the kind of thing where items used to solve one puzzle may be needed to be used in later puzzles. Yeah, and this is more like what I'm used to in the escape rooms, like the, the real physical escape rooms, where what you do in one place will often matter at a later point, which isn't something we've seen a lot in a lot of these no, escape we rooms haven't. in boxes. Though, again, the Secret Lab did have some of that, so this is definitely hearkening more to that. Now, like all exit games, you are meant to play this immediately out of the box. Uh, unlike our earlier review, there's no preparation required. The rules are written to be read out loud to the players before you start playing the first time. As an alternative to reading the rules, you can also download the Cosmos Helper app, which includes a timer that features ambiance and stuff in the background as well. A nice helper app that helps, but is in no way required. No, not at all. We use it, because why not? Now, after completing the Catacomb of Horrors, you will receive a score based on how quickly you manage to escape, as well as how many clue cards you need to use. Help cards, sorry. How many help cards you need to use. This particular exit game also has some bonus points that can be earned. And you don't actually start the timer at the start of the game. It gets started only after solving a particular clue. Right. Well, interesting, but I won't press for details as nope. no spoilers here. No spoilers here. All right. The story behind Catacombs of Horror. This is on the back of the box. It may sound like a spoiler, but it's not. You receive a letter from your friend Ben, who has gone missing in the catacombs under Paris, where over six million people are buried. It's up to the players to look for Ben and help him escape from this unfortunate situation. Now, the gameplay in this in all exit games, including this one, is based at looking at the clues you have on hand at the start of the game and trying to figure out a code to put into the code wheel. You put that into the code wheel, then you look to an answer card. If you're on the right track, that'll lead you to a further answer card, which will introduce the next puzzle. Only uh, the next puzzle will often have you reveal more clues from the riddle deck and or bring in more of those unusual objects we talked about. This is pretty much the basis for gameplay in all exit games. But now and then they will throw you a curveball and you'll do something else, like some variant of this to unlock the next clue. I will just say that this exit game had some neat ways of moving things forward that weren't just put a puzzle on a on a decoder ring. Well, always good when uh, they can make it uh, make you work for it and not just repeat themselves from earlier games. You don't want to worry that when you buy the next one, you're going to be bored. Yeah, I, this is the the most impressive thing about all these exit games is how did they come up with all these? It blows me away every time we sit down to play one of these. Now, if you ever do get stuck, there are the help cards I mentioned. There are three for each puzzle. The first one is really simple. All it does is make sure you have everything you need to solve the clue on hand, which can be important because, as I said, some clues carry over to later into the game. Second help card gives you a very strong hint. Like, this is pretty close. Like, it's, it's going to tell you how to combine the things you have, probably. Now, the final card does give you the actual solution and the code and the cards you need to look up next. Right, so just enough help when you need it so that you can still have a chance to feel like you accomplished something right up until you flip that third one in frustration and it's over. Then that one's over. Now, one unique feature of the Catacombs of Horror is that it is a longer game experience. It features 14 puzzles, which is actually four more than the original. The original games all have 10. Uh, it's split into two groups of seven, and at about the halfway point, you are presented with the option to save your game. This is when you open the contents of the second box and no way I'm telling you what's in there. <laughs> the game at that point indicates that you what you still need, which is really nice. It's like, all right, out of everything you now have all over your table spread everywhere, this is what you still need and this is what you don't. So then you can take the stuff you don't need, throw it out, and you can place what you do need back into the box and return to it at a later date. A handy feature for certain, especially on a longer game like this. Yeah. Uh, the game actually lists as up to four hours at a time and four hours is something a lot of people just don't have to dedicate no. to a game very true now in addition to the components that come with the game you will need a pen or marker of some sort scissors and a way to light the candle Cat, uh now again remember you won't actually be burning anything it's very clear about this you will need somewhere dark to play and you will end up destroying some of the components in the game 
as you do in all exit games. This is important for people who don't know the series because these games are one and done. Once you play it, you're not passing it on to anyone else. You destroy the game as you play. Right. So now that we have a vague idea of what you get in the box and how the system works, how did the Catacombs of Horror play out for you? Well, every time I play one of these games, I am impressed of just the 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 brilliance of of the brands and who they're working with on each game they're just the out of the box thinking that goes into making these like we played four and there are way more than four out there and so far every single puzzle has been completely unique there hasn't been any repetition and the most amazing part is most of the time you're just looking for three digit codes i can't believe the number of ways they've thought of to get you to try to find three digit codes and figure out what order those numbers are in like i i just i it blows me away every time and there's always something in every box that completely surprises me. Like something I'm like, wow, I, I would have never, wow. And this is no exception. The sheer number of unusual items, as they call them, and the quality of the items is impressive in this particular game. Like there's a lot of stuff in this box. This is very full compared to just like a single punch board or maybe a marble or something. And I got to say those three tiny skulls are the coolest game components I have seen in a long time. Like I think they beat out the crystal skulls in Zolkin. Like these are awesome. And they make a very cool artifact to keep once the game's done. And I got to say the candle thing is cool. Like they did something neat with the candle. It was well done. Well, it sounds like there might almost be too much stuff in this one. Uh, Keeping track of it must be tough. Yeah, well, this is, that's the problem with this one, right? Because of all the exit games we played, this one was closest to Secret Lab because the problem we have with Secret Lab as our first exit experience is here we have all this stuff and it's in front of you and you have no clue what to do. Like you're, you're literally stumped. Now I played exit games, so I know I'm looking for a three digit code. So I'm trying to find something that'll help me get a three digit code and put it in a code wheel. First time we played Secret Lab, we didn't even know that. So I at least know that but there's all this stuff. And now I will admit, not all the stuff's on the table at the time. You you only start with a handful of the, the items at the beginning of the game. Uh, but man, like this, it was hard to figure out what to do next. Like this led to us wasting a lot of time, especially because right at the beginning of the game, even you unlock stuff you don't need till the end. And trying to put together things that don't actually go together or putting together the right things, but realizing you're missing a piece or you didn't have something on hand yet, led to a lot of wasted time. So really, inventory management is vital in these games. Yeah, keeping track of what goes to what. So what this ended up doing is this had us using way more clues than we have in any previous exit game. Now, this is a 4.5 out of 5, the highest rating difficulty they have. And there were some brilliant puzzles that took us a while to figure out. And those felt great when you figured them out. Like you're like, oh, it's this, I get it. Or, oh, there's this symbol, so I need to do that. Again, I don't want to spoil anything. But there were a small handful of puzzles in this box out of the 14 that we did not get at all. I have never felt as lost as we did while playing an exit game as we did playing this one. Like we had three adults playing. It wasn't just Deanna and I. We also included her mother. And like we're all puzzle fans. We played these games before. We're not stupid people and oh we we could have definitely used one or two more sets of eyes with us or at least other brains thinking another way well that is much like a lot of real escape room experiences so i guess they really do replicate these rooms in a box so in the end the you get ranked at the end of this game and we only scored three out of ten stars and to be honest, it's worse than that because I mentioned earlier there's a bonus in this one. Technically, we got three out of 12 stars because we didn't get the bonus either. Now, the box on this game notes a max of 80 minutes per half. We took almost two hours each half. And that's not counting that time before the timer started. By the time we stopped the timer, we are at 220 minutes. And I, I there had to be a good 20 minutes at least before then. So we're looking at four hours here. Added to that, is is the the bonus point thing like there was this final riddle that i don't know like like we failed that like that, that final riddle completely stumped us and had us actually sit there and look at a third clue card and just have to get the answer not because we didn't finish it but like how how did how would you get to this answer because we can't see how and there was something there like i we would have never gotten it without that clue well to be fair Losing is also a part of the escape room experience. 
if not the best part. No, I agree. Like uh, just overall, as as you can tell, this was not easy to solve. This is definitely like they're right on the rating. It, this is definitely the hardest escape game they published. This is definitely um, there were puzzles in here that definitely fell on the frustrating side rather than the fun side of things when we got when we got stumped. Uh, what I think we need to do, and what I encourage anyone who plays through this exit game and any to be honest is be more liberal with the use of the help cards your overall score is actually affected more by the time you take than the number of cards so if you're worried about your score you're actually better off using like getting the clues earlier plus it's important to note that when you get a clue card if it doesn't teach you anything new if it doesn't actually help you it doesn't count against your score so grabbing that top card just to confirm you have everything you need on hand could just be that little extra push to realize, oh, I only need these three things. And it didn't teach me anything new. So that's not even counting against you. So it's just to, to make sure you're on the right track and get you past that roadblock. Right. This is actually something we ran into in, in real rooms too. Uh, sometimes things just don't work and you need a hand from you call, calling the referee to point out yeah. that you were doing it right, but you hadn't pressed hard enough or there was just something that yes you were doing everything right except you, this happened yeah while the puzzles were were mostly solid I, the one thing i did find is they weren't neat like they weren't as whimsical and fun as they were at least in the last exit game we played the haunted roller coaster like these felt more like the puzzles in secret lab and i wonder if that's again because this is one of the older games this wasn't published this is a 2018 game whereas a hundred roller coasters of 2019. And I think they've gotten better as the time's gone on and they've gotten to make them more fun instead of more logic and spotting the right thing. Um, also the theme, I actually like the theme better in haunted roller coaster that felt more fun in Halloween with ghost skeletons and Frankenstein's monster where this was ritualistic horror um, and very much like hurry rush time. Um, which also led to catacombs of horror, not being family friendly. Uh, so actually we're glad we didn't include the kids on this one like we had a pretty good idea by the cover of the box and everything and the tone of it but this one definitely is not as family friendly as say catacombs of horror which is about being on a haunted roller coaster and running into silly ghosts and stuff haunted roller coaster is about yes no, not catacombs. catacombs of horror now as soon as you mentioned the catacombs beneath paris i pretty much ruled out the kids there right yeah. away <laughs> overall i have mixed thoughts i don't know um like I remember while playing it, feeling very frustrated a number of times and honestly feeling stupid sitting around going, what, what's wrong with us? Like, why can't we figure this out? Now, looking back on the experience after the fact, I don't know, those times don't seem as bad. And I clearly remember the rewarding moments, the, oh, we solved that right away. And we figured that, oh, remember when I got these two things to work together, when I took that and put it with this, oh, that was brilliant. So I don't know, it, it, it's, it's leaving me with, with with mixed feelings. Catacombs of Horror is definitely quite difficult. I would be extremely impressed to learn that anyone got 12 stars in this. Like, I, I, maybe it's out there, but like, you got to be an idiot savant or something to be able to pull this off. Cause like, I don't see it. We got three. Like, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, even if we pulled more clues, well, if we pulled more clues, you wouldn't get 12 either. Like, I just can't see it. It, it seems to be that step above. Well, and that's the big upside on this. Not feel, not your feeling in the moment, the stress and the frustration. But afterwards, when you laugh and joke about it, win or lose, uh, that's really kind of the the experience of the game, right? right? It's that it's that after. It's what you walk away with, not you know cursing and and swearing in yeah. the in the moment because you didn't do as well as you wanted to, or you got completely stumped on something mm. for some reason. Yeah, and we definitely even had that because we did take two days to play it. That after playing the first day, I was more looking forward to go back the second day, even though we had been frustrated a number of times the first day. I Overall, I definitely don't recommend Catacomb of Horrors for anyone who hasn't played an exit game before. There is no way this should be considered a gateway. If you're looking for a gateway exit game, pick up Haunted Roller Coaster. Save this one until you have more experience. And I would suggest more experienced than just haunted roller coaster i would recommend haunted roller coaster than maybe secret lab or something else that's a rated three i would also point people towards haunted roller coaster if you're looking for a spooky game to play on halloween uh just to tie in with the podcast episode where we're recording this we're talking about great games to play with your family on halloween that's going to be haunted roller coaster not catacomb before 
if you find most of escape room box games in a box too easy or if you're an expert at doing escape rooms or if you really like to be challenged this may be the box for you catacombs of horror has some great components that are used in some really cool ways to do things and solve things and contains a broad range of puzzles that are going to challenge any group it's just up to you if you really think you're up for that challenge and it's something you'd enjoy well for a more in-depth look at Exit the Game Chronicles of... No, not Chronicles of Horror. Catacombs of Horror. You can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.